What is going on YouTube? We have a retro sound radio for an FJ40. Originally, I wasn't going to document this install, but I figured what the heck, I've got the channel, I've got a new product, let's check it out. So I was uh, just thinking about it when I was putting this together. So the radio comes in a bunch of different pieces. This face plate is in its own box, which is right there. And it really just takes two uh, Phillips on each side to put in. And then you've got these black side brackets that are side specific. There's a left and a right. And that is going to be where you put these guys. So this is going to be your radio control knobs. And they slide through here with the knobs that you spec out. So these retro sound radios are very customizable. Uh, this is the dash plate for a factory FJ40. Um, you can get one that's uh, for a cut dash. So they call it like a repair kit that's like $60 more. And it basically has longer sides and I think it's taller top and bottom, uh, but it still has the same face size and the same um, knob location. And so basically these have these little telephone cable looking things that plug into the side right here. And this is fully loaded with all your optional equipment. So this is Sirius XM radio ready. Um, I don't think I'll be using that feature, uh, but we've got pre-wired harnesses ready to go right here so that harness is going to accept this one right here and so it's already fused and it's got your rca jacks for the subwoofer which is awesome and so this plug right here there's two plugs it's going to accept this one which is all your speakers and i really liked how they labeled everything right here so you don't have to keep looking at the install manual you know what's what based off the color and this second plug, they go side by side in here, is going to have all of your power wire and um, you know optional antenna mast if you have a power antenna and all that good stuff. Uh, but um, I don't have that on this. And then last thing, it does come with a um, microphone for your uh, Bluetooth capabilities. So this thing will pick up phone calls and do all kinds of fancy things. It's got a uh, little amplifier built in. So I'm not going for a huge powerhouse on the radio, but um, the stock one that was in there no longer worked. So I figured let's just get it up to date with the most modern technology. All right, so since we're kind of jumping into this uh, because I wasn't recording, let me fill you in on what happened. So I drove this thing at night. The cluster lights were ridiculously dim so I decided to pull the cluster and put in LED bulbs um, I'll link the product links for all this stuff in the description so once I pulled that out I realized that the lens was really foggy really dirty so I took it apart cleaned it and then um, there was a lot of bad wiring for the aftermarket radio so I figured out order a radio and then I just started taking everything apart. You know, I had the cluster off, I was cleaning off the, some of the haze on the paint and uh, it just turned into like a full detail. So I took off all the easy stuff and um, I polished it. It's been about, I don't know, three or four hours of hand polishing the dashboard. That's still all the factory original paint all the way across. And you can see right here, I haven't touched that. so. It does have like a haze, you kind of see it right there a little bit. And then I still need to work on that and do all the doors and everything, but I wanted to do the whole dash at one shot. So we're gonna do that. Um, along the way, I realized that there were LED uh, conversions available for the heater control knob, which is this light right here. And then there's a dash light right here, which takes the same bulb, so I ordered two of those. And then one more dome light right here, uh, but that is a longer bulb than these two shorter ones over here. Um, other than that, I only put two LED bulbs to actually illuminate the cluster. There are other bulbs for the turn signals, the high beam indicator, and um, the uh, brake and fasten seat belts, which goes right here. But I just left those as standard incandescent bulbs. So here's the radio. Um, I was very fortunate that they didn't cut the dash. Um, a lot of guys have to deal with a cut dash and it's, it's not as pretty as an uncut dash. The only thing I did realize was someone bent the tabs. There should be tabs sticking back. So I do need to bend those straight back. And then I'll show you the retro sound radio 
um, inside and see what brackets we're going to need to make because they don't come with brackets to mount it up. You can see this one had this uh, little tab on the bottom and that was only screwed in down here. So it was pretty much hanging on for dear life. Uh, but we're going to put the newer, better radio in, much more secure. All right, so we got the uh, brackets bent out as best as we can. Now this is the first issue. So they give you these brackets and that's to mount the, um, the tuning knobs and the vol volume knob. Uh, but this radio, it fits perfectly in there with the knobs and everything. So if you look, if you have that factory flange right there, these wings are going to hit it. So what I'm going to do is basically just behind this, I'm going to bend it back. So we're gonna roll this back straight and we're gonna hope that either this one or this one lands on that slot and we could essentially use the same bracket to mount the radio. And then I might just do like a lower bushing and or maybe like a stack of washers on the bottom so it could uh, set and rest right here. And uh, that way we have three forms of support. But uh, we'll be doing a little trial and error and see what happens. Well, there it is mocked up. I uh, ran into a few things that I just wanna go over. One, the radius on these corners is a little too blunt. You could see it right there. So I'm going to just very lightly take off some of the corners so it works better with this. Um, but I was able to get the uh, bolt hole to line up. It's very hard to see in the picture, but I'm gonna pull it out and show you what I did. These wires are stuck back there okay so this radio has a downside right um, actually speaking of that I won't need to do any washers on this it actually rests on it if anything I've got to bend this down just a little bit because it's trying to kick the radio and it kind of puts it at a downward angle on the face uh, but that's very minor so I bent these brackets just shy of the face plate and uh, if you look there's a left and a right bracket I had to flip them and so what flipping them did was it landed this hole right here just barely in line with the lips on each one so I tried to do it with the brackets on the correct side and it wasn't anywhere close so I figured might as well it was a long shot let's swap them left to right upside down and it worked perfectly. And we're still in line with the knob to go through and we could still tighten that like normal. And we'll have the radio bolted up without issue. So there is a, a custom bracket you can make. You can use this bolt hole right here and bend it up and do all kinds of uh, fancy bending. But for what I have at home, I'm just using some uh, large adjustable crescent wrench, which is right there you can get this bent up and installed with the brackets that come in the kit so from here we're just going to do a little bit of wiring and get the faceplate and knobs dialed in these knobs are um, adjustable in and out so they've got this setting right here and then another lock nut washer in the front and so what you want to do is basically dial it in so it lands at a decent spot when it's all the way through so this radio is very, very modular. Um, it looks great, it looks the part, and it's got a digital face, so I can't wait to power it up and see how it sounds. So one of the first things I noticed when we bought this thing was that it had door speakers, which aren't original, but you could see the wire just hanging right there. So they just drilled a hole in the door and drilled a hole on the body to get the speaker wire across. Now, um, since we're in here, we're going to make it look a little nicer. And I ordered these little aftermarket door jam boots. So it'll go here and here. And uh, all we have to do is drill that out just a little bit more. And we could feed the speaker wire through that. And it just looks a little bit better than having some re uh, regular old speaker wire hanging out. And from there, we'll get the speakers on. I'll run these wires all the way up through the dash to the radio and we can start checking for the power 
and constant uh, 12 volt wires to the radio to get everything else installed. Yes, this is the size drill bit I needed to put a larger hole. It definitely hurt, but this looks way better. It looks a little bit more professional and um, I'll take this any day over that little speaker wire just kind of hanging in there. So I had to open up the holes. It was not fun, but at the end, the result was definitely worth it. And the way they had it wired originally, the speaker wire went straight to the radio to the speaker. So you would have had to snip the speaker wires just to get the door off, which I had originally done uh, when I did the weather seal replacements because we took the doors off. So now with the boot, it's a bigger hole. I'll be able to feed the wires in and out and remove the boot if I need to. As you can see, I already took it off. Um, so it makes it more serviceable and uh, more user friendly instead of being hardwired. We're not um, committed to that 24 seven and we don't have to keep cutting wires and splicing in, do a lot, doing all that weird stuff. So this will be better in the future if I ever need to take these doors off. All right, so um, we are still using the original speaker, the aftermarket speaker and cover that came with the Land Cruiser. And um, we are putting some Rockford Fosgates in there just because nothing else would fit when the window rolled down. Uh, but as I showed you earlier, we put the boot on. So now we have a boot instead of a wire and just around the areas that are going to be hard to get to. I did some cut cleaner um, compound and polish and you can see that line right there. You see that fade line. I haven't done any of this. So for the past few days, I've been polishing out the whole dashboard all the way across. And now I'm going to be doing anything that's going to get in the way of the speaker wiring. From there, we have to run this to the radio and do a little bit more wiring and it should be fired up soon. All right, so we are, man, almost a week and a half, two weeks in on this stereo install and I'll tell you why. So when I took this apart, there was a little haze on the dash all the way across. Um, I used a microfiber, some cutting compound and I hand polished everything, got all the haze off, took the gauge cluster out, fully disassembled it, cleaned everything and uh, of course got the speakers in with the boots and now the radio has been installed everything's been tightened down and we'll turn it on and see what it sounds like takes a little second to fire up i set the background to green uh, because the dash pad light and the light for the heater control is green all right, well, I can't have any uh, music because of copyright, but it's showing the song that's playing on the radio. And uh, all these can be pre-programmed to any setting you want. Um, there is uh, preset equalizer settings right here. And then uh, if we let it time out, okay, push and hold. And so there is different settings for all of this stuff here, clock, display. There's a lot going on. You could turn the beeps on, dims. Um, there's just too much to list, honestly. You have to go through the manual. This is the Bluetooth. And uh, one thing I forgot to mention, or maybe I mentioned it before, I'm not sure, but there was a switch here. I don't know what the switch did, so I took it out and I put the microphone here. Now the microphone has this little ball that swivels and you kind of like, has like a clip. So I snipped the ball off and I put a, just a random nut from the garage that I had through the back and it's plastic. It's got a little neck and I just hand threatened the, thre threaded the nut on. So it's pulling the mic to the dash. So I made a few calls and people could hear me pretty well. Um, but obviously uh, with road noise and driving, it may be, um a little harder to hear but i know it works and it's in a good position and it kind of blends in so anyways uh this is the stereo install all wrapped up i was able to fit it in with the brackets that it comes with wired everything up no problems it's, there's a tag on each harness for the power and the ground uh, the original radio harness is two pronged it already has your 12 volt acc and it has the ground so i just put two spade terminals right into it then um, i needed to find a constant ground so i 
put a terminal and tapped it to the red wire on the cigarette lighter. That's a constant 12. I have the cigarette lighter. I'm just, I have it taken out so I can clean everything and polish it out. Um, but yeah, that was my constant 12. And um, you can get the, the highest version of this radio, which is what I got, or the middle version, which is just as good. Um, but I wouldn't recommend the base model, especially for doing all this work. Just spend the extra money. I think it's like 384 for this version. Um, and it fits so well on the factory dash. If you have a dash that's been cut, they do sell a plate for another 60 bucks. And it'll go further out and higher up and lower and kind of hide all that. But you could still use this interface and the knob depth or uh, the knob distance will be the same. So it's just covering up some of that damaged area. Anyways, drop a comment if you have any questions. Let me know what you think. And uh, from here, I'm just going to drive this thing and enjoy the new tunes.